Economists are turning to alternative uh, in real time data uh, to monitor the economic effects of the virus in the United States. Steve Leisman digs into what they're looking at and what it shows. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning, Joe. Yeah, economists see two priorities here. One is to gauge the extent of the downturn, and the second uh, is to look for any kind of upturn. And just from the gauging bit, I'll tell you that Goldman this morning lowered its first quarter forecast using its proprietary data to minus 9%, which is about the worst I've seen for just the first quarter. That's before we get to this quarter, the next quarter here. Uh, the official data, unfortunately, it lags, and it's not really designed to track something like this. So they've turned to this alternative and real-time data. And I'll give you a few examples of this. Uh, here's a TD Securities using city map it, mapper data to track mobility in a bunch of U.S. cities, six U.S. cities, on a real-time or a daily basis here. You can see it's all down, as you might expect, which obviously that's terrible news for economic activity, but it might be a positive sign for slowing the spread of the virus. And again, it's something that if we do get an upturn or when we get an upturn, uh, this data will start to tick up. Morgan Stanley, like every other economic house where I'm, I'm following, they're following the coronavirus data, but they're also looking for the mention of coronavirus in SEC filings on a daily basis. Again, this is on the way up. Perhaps when the turnaround comes, it will be on the way down and you'll be able to gauge it pretty quickly. Uh, and then there's my favorite data, which I, I found is this Yelp data, uh, which they have all these millions of searches that they track and they get hyper focused when it comes to individual types of businesses that are out there. Uh, and what you can see is American interest in search by restaurant type, as you might expect, the relative performance inside the restaurant group, pizza doing the best, Chinese food the second, Italian not so good, and French the worst of all. And again, we can track this on an almost daily basis here to see when these things sort of turn. But don't get too excited about the restaurant data because the consumer interest overall for restaurants down 54 percent. Consumer interest for nightlife down by 69 percent. One other good thing about this data, it'll help us gauge the effect of the stimulus and maybe inform the debate that Eamon's talking about, which is whether or not we need a second stimulus bill, depending upon what happens to economic activity here. Guys, I'll be back at 830 with uh, the work that Goldman's doing, which really is second to none. They've developed a whole series of economic indicators to gauge the effects of the coronavirus in real time. Becky, Joe. Steve, you know how you, uh, you know, when, when you're doing, people are really excited or moderately excited. So you add those two. I think you need to add pizza in, in Italian together. That would clearly put Italian way uh, up at, uh, don't, do you see what I'm saying, though? I mean, I think, you know. I, the other I, thing I, I do. That I, I do. I, I thought about that. I, I thought about that. Let Joe. me tell. You, let me. He, 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 I, I in a, on more serious, more serious note. We were talking about another stimulus package, and then we were talking about God. We added, you know, ten percent of our total debt right away. And I was thinking, we are going to throw, uh, in in terms of shutting the economy down, we're throwing everything we possibly can to try to stop this virus. And then, since we're shutting the economy down, we're going to throw everything we possibly can to try to keep the economy running and, and give it put it in a position to come back. So basically, if you cut out the middleman, we're just ready to spend anything to save our people and stop this this virus. That's what we're spending it on. And that's why no one that's why we've all become MMTers at this point, because we will do anything to try and save as many people as we can. And, and the economy, you know, is is, you know, the sort of taking the brunt end of it. But we're going to try and save that, too. I mean, isn't it that simple, Steve, that that's what we're going to do? I think it is simple. And, and you know what, Joe, that's sort of a positive sign that we're not really arguing the what political economic situation here. Uh, it's one of those things where you have a fire. Right. And nobody's debating uh, whether or not we're using too much water here. Uh, we can come back. We can have an argument about deficits. We can have an argument about how to run the economy, about whether or not the government gets too involved or the Fed gets too involved. But everybody sees the need for this. Both sides are on board with it on the need for stimulus. I think maybe some of the details we could debate, and we debated them for four or five days over in the Senate and the House before the bill was passed. But you're right. Uh, we're going to figure it out, uh, what needs to be done to save people's lives, and figure out what needs to be done to sa save uh, the economy here. And we're in a unique position to do it, Joe. It's because we print the dollars 
that are the world currency. If we were a, a country with a large foreign debt or debt in a foreign currency, we'd be having a much bigger problem and a very different debate right now. It is the exceptional position of the U.S. in the world economy that gives us the luxury to do this right now.